Jewish mortuary building was blown up. Jewish prisoners were forced to desecrate the graves of their forefathers to make a road through the camp from tombstones. This was to be Plushov forced labor camp, home for 20,000 Jewish men, women, and children. SS Untersturmführer Amon Gert, fresh from the liquidation of the Lublin ghettos, was brought to Krakow to run the new camp and supervise the destruction of the remains of Krakow Jewish life. Amin Get himself, with his SS men, was in charge. Elderly women, children, sick people were shot on the spot. And they were brought up with flat trucks into our camp in Plashev. I myself, with a group of other boys, had to unload the people who were shot in one case, we asked a German because a young kid was there and wasn't dead yet. And we asked her, would you give a Gennad shas, a Gennade? Gennade is the word like a kindness. So we will not bury her uh, alive. And he said, throw it in. It's, it's a shade. He said, it's a shame to waste a bullet on that schmutzig Jude. And we had to pour gasoline over them and we kept on uh, burning them. Proudly, the German film units showed their action squads at work. But one German sought to protect his people from the orgy of killing. On the morning of March 13, 1943, uh, Schindler has told us not to return to the ghetto as we would normally do, but to remain there and, and make the best of it by sleeping wherever we can because there was trouble in the ghetto. Uh, the ghetto was being liquidated, there's killings going on, and he wants to keep us over that period. During that period, while I was uh, in the, in the uh, factory staying over for the next three nights and worked during days or worked nights, uh, the ghetto was liquidated together with my family of uh, parents, two sisters, two brothers. Uh, the one brother was shot down as he tried to cross from one line to another one. The rest of the family's fate is unknown to me, but I suspect they went to Auschwitz. I have never seen him since. <laughs> people died in the ghetto during those days. The survivors began a new life behind barbed wire. It was frightening. It was very sad. I think the first time I realized that there is no way out, people were committing suicide right then and there. I remember a doctor's mother that took some poison in the same barrack where I was staying. This was the beginning. Then the, one day they came and they told us to give everything that we own in way of money and jewelry and things like that. And we had to put it on the pile and this was the end of it. From his villa inside the camp perimeter, Commandant Amon Gert did not want for the small luxuries that made life so agreeable for the loyal servants of the Third Reich. That summer of 43 was a warm one. Gert had soon installed his German mistress, Ruth, in the villa with him. So what was it like for the 24-year-old German, now, as we see, dying from emphysema, surrounded as she was then by the remnants of Krakow's jewelry, the old and the young? I never see any old people. And I never saw any uh, children. Uh, I just saw, I, I remember one afternoon, there came a tra uh, uh, big car, and this car was full of children. Uh, and, and, uh, They went somewhere, 
and uh, I had a girlfriend there, the, the wife of um, Mr. Sherna. And I said, oh, look at that. They are bringing the children somewhere. And uh, I was down, you see, and, and it went to my heart somehow. Uh, and she had a set of two children. Oh, she said, the Jews.